Welcome back. This is Bill Papoon, Managing Partner at Construction Science. And in this episode, we're going to talk about notebook topics. There are actually two types of notebook topics. The first notebook topic is one that we apply to the project in general. We do this in the EPS. And if I bring up the bottom layout, where we're looking at details, you'll see that one of the topics I'm displaying is notebook. So under notebook, when we want to add a comment about the project in general, we do it right here. We click on Add. And then you'll see several standard topics. A few of these are ones that I've created. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But basically, what I'll use this for under the EPS is for something like this production notes. In other words, I'll leave comments for myself as to what sort of production I should be running for this particular project. As a consultant, I work on dozens of projects every month, so it's difficult to otherwise remember exactly what I should be producing. So this saves me quite a bit of time, plus every time I copy the schedule, these electronic notes will be saved with the copy of the schedule. Now, starting with Primavera version 8.0, it's a two-step process. It used to be that once we selected a topic under Notebook, we would just begin typing. Now we have to click on Modify, and you'll see that we have some basic uh, formatting keys that we can use. But primarily, again, I'm not interested in that. I'm just trying to keep track of a few notes. So I can type something in there. Something like this. I might remind myself the name of a particular layout that they like to use, that sort of thing. How many copies of a report they like to see. Do they prefer PDFs or do they want hard copies? Now, the other notebook topic is particular to an activity. So for the same project, I'm going to go inside there. And what we can do for every one of these activities, we can have an individual notebook comment. Now here my purpose is much more specific. So let's go in here and actually I'll scan down a little bit. Let's just pick one of these activities and let's add a notebook topic. So I go and open up the bottom layout. Once more you see the notebook tab. And I'll come in here, click on add. And a great use of the notebook comic for in topic for individual activities is for something like change order. So I can come in now and I can say this activity something like that. Now I'm also going to make the text pretty small. That won't make much sense until you see where we display this information on the Gantt chart. So I'm going to highlight all the text, click on the capital A, and I'm going to take it down to, say, a 10 font for now. We'll see how that works, but I'm going to make it fairly small. Now, the other thing that's nice about the notebook topic is that we can have more than one. So let's say I also want to keep track of certain information such as basis and assumptions. This is a standard topic that Primavera gives you. There's about 20 of them, and I'm going to show you how to create a unique one. But I'm going to click on basis and assumptions. And notice we have a blank slate, so it's just like turning to another page in your notebook. Now I can come in here and say something like, this original duration In other words, if anyone challenges me on why we put a particular duration on an activity, I can tell people or remind myself of where it came from. Or I might have a situation, and I think we have a few of these in a schedule, where we have a particular amount of time that has to be required for testing 
and it's in the specifications. So you can see that in this instance, I've even indicated where I found this information in the specifications. So it's a reminder that the five days is actually driven by the contract. Now here too, I would probably want to make this a little bit smaller. It looks like it's still a 12 font. So let's take that down to 10. Now I try not to put too many words under any particular topic if I ever want to display this. Unfortunately, we cannot show that as a column. In other words, we can't add a column that represents a notebook topic. Now you'll notice we do have a print function here where you can do a very basic printout of this particular comment. That doesn't do much good because we'd have to do that for each individual activity. So what I'll do is I'll display the notebook comments over on the Gantt chart. So let's just close the bottom layout for now. And let's add a label for notebook topics. Now this process of adding a label would be true for any type of label, but because it's easiest to display notebook comments in the Gantt chart, it's a great place to start. So we right click within the Gantt chart and we go to bars. Now because I would like to see all of my activities get the same type of label, I'm going to go down to a particular category and it's called current bar labels. I might have to expand that out so you can read it. In other words, when I want every single activity to have the same type of label, we choose this. In some instances, I'd like the critical path to have one type of label, but other activities to have another. So for example, I could show something like the start and finish date as a label on this activity, and I could show total float on those that are non-critical. But again, to make it real simple, I'm going to have all the bars with the same label. Now obviously, if activities don't have a notebook comment, they won't show a label. But this will be an easy way for me to demonstrate to the owner or someone else that we do in fact have comments on some of these activities. So we're going to come in here and we're going to choose the current bar labels. Come down here to bar labels, and I'm going to decide where I want to position this. Now by default, Primavera typically picks the right side, and that makes sense because most of the blank space on a Gantt chart is to the right, not to the left. So we want to take advantage of all this white space over here. So I'm going to put my label to the right. Rather than activity name, we're going to skip down to the notebook topics, and I'm going to look for that one we just talked about, which was basis and assumptions. Now notice we have the option here, we can show only one type of topic, which is nice. I can have certain notebook topics that are confidential. I don't want the owner to see these comments. Whereas I can have other notebook topics that are public. I will show them on the Gantt chart. So for this one, we're going to show basis and assumptions. We hit apply, OK. Now notice we have some issues. Whenever you do a label that in particular is a notebook topic, it fits inside a text box. And to modify this text box, we go back to the Gantt chart, right click, and we go to bar chart options, not bars, but bar chart options. Under bar chart options, under the general tab, you'll see this is how we're creating the size of this comment box. So typically, I have found that I will make it fairly wide, at least 300 pixels. And I might not need it to be quite 50 pixels high, because when you make it too high, it creates a big gap like this vertically in your Gantt chart. So I'll try 40. Now keep in mind, the font size also determines how tall we need to make this. So let's try that. That looks a lot better. But you'll notice a lot of these, if we were to go back, apparently we still have the larger text. That's why the 10 font really seems to work the best. Otherwise, I keep making my text boxes bigger and bigger to fit the words, and it does not wrap automatically. So let's just go ahead and close that out. And you can see that with the 10 font, even with the 30 pixels wide, I actually need to make it wider 
So let's go back, right click, bar chart options, and let's try 400. It's sort of an, an iterative process because I might have played with it quite a bit. And again, this is one of the reasons we're trying not to be too wordy. Now I think on this one right here, if we just go to the smaller font, should fit pretty good. So let's bring this up, highlight it. Sorry, I should highlight it here. We have to do it over again. And let's make it a 10. See how that looks. A lot better. You can see that a lot of these are starting to show up a lot better. So again, with a little bit of trial and error, I can display this. So any activity that has that type of comment, in particular basis and assumptions only, will now show up. Tomorrow I might decide that I want to change it. In other words, I'll go back to labels, and I might say, let's show another topic. How about that change order one? Let's see if anything shows up. We know there will be at least one activity because I added one. So let's see where it is. There it is. There's one we added. And here's the benefit, of course, of the very brief description. It fits easily within a text box. So just keep in mind that if you're going to type long paragraphs under the notebook topic, it's going to be very difficult to display it on your Gantt chart. Well, I appreciate your joining me today. If you'd like to know more about our training, we do both online training every week, and we also do in-person training anywhere in the country. And you can reach me at this email address, or just try us at our website to check us out. And also, you can call us anytime. We'd love to talk to you about our training programs. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see as a video, please drop us a line, and we'll produce it for you right away. Thanks.